Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? It is January the 23rd, 2024. And today is the second part, of, well the second cooking video that I've made this far. And uh, I think you guys are really going to like the dish that I prepared. Uh, very low carb, high protein, um, not a lot of dairy in it. Um, you can omit the dairy completely if you would like. Uh, um, the, the dish is a uh, pan seared... Uh, basil, basil oil marinated chicken thigh uh, that's been pan seared with um, an almond milk alfredo, spaghetti squash, steamed broccoli, and a balsamic reduction drizzle. And I actually went through a couple of little tips and tricks as I was cooking and talked about a couple little things just to give you guys some pointers in the kitchen, how not to waste some, some food, how to save some other objects. I, I, I did have bone-in chicken thighs today when I did it. I broke those down on camera and talked about saving the chicken bones and how to make a chicken broth and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, today's video is very interesting. Um, I think my, I actually made the dish and then I hollered at my daughter. She's home today and I went and screamed for her and she came into the kitchen. I said, here, you eat this. And she said it was really good. And she's actually in there eating it right now. I just finished doing the video and came out here just to go ahead and do the uh, intro to today's video. Um, and then I'm going to go inside and edit everything, put it all together, and post it up. Um, just wanted to go through and touch on a couple of items really quick before we get into today's video. Uh, number one, um, I talked about this yesterday. My buddy Sammy is going to uh, be doing an interview with me on Friday. Um, as far as I know, everything's still online for that to happen. I'm really looking forward to that interview. Uh, and then um, the next thing, um, I think you guys are going to find this one really interesting as well. I spoke with my mother this morning, and she is actually going to do an interview with me on Friday, uh, on Thursday. Um, so I'm not exactly sure how the videos are going to play out this week. Um, I'm go I'm going to meet with my mom on Thursday. We're going to film that video, and then I'm going to post probably a portion of that video on Thursday. It's probably going to be either a two or three part. Uh, little series that I'm going to put up. Um, I have a feeling that this that interview is going to go on for quite some time. I really want to kind of like get into the beginnings of it. Uh, you know, like talk with my mom. Like I've said before, my, my mom's dad was an alcoholic. Her grandfather was an alcoholic. We have a lot of alcoholics in our family. I just want to kind of hear her side from her growing up and what she dealt with and then kind of moving in to my childhood, when she started noticing that I was using drugs and drinking, I mean, like I've said before, I did from a very young age, and my mom caught me quite a few times, and, uh, you know, she saw me drunk all the time. Um, I just thought that it would be really neat to kind of hear her perspective on it, to hear, you know, what she dealt with, how she felt about the whole situation, and just to hear it from another person, you know, to get the perspective of someone, how someone is affected by your alcoholism and you're in and they're not the drinker uh i just thought it'd be really neat to hear this uh you know bring some insight into it just to to bring the awareness that it's not just our personal lives that we're affected when we drink and there's other people around us that we do affect as well and you know we do hurt other people when we continue to drink the way that we do sometimes and um I just thought it would be a really interesting <clears throat> talk to have with her and hear her side of it. <clears throat> and also the same with Sammy, uh, you know, coming from uh, another aspect where he is the drinker as well. And I just wanted to kind of start off from his childhood when he started drinking, you know, what, what led him up the path he was on and then what made him stop and why he, because he's, he's sober now. And I want to get his uh, perspective on like why he quit and what he did to stop drinking and all that kind of good stuff. I just thought it'd be really neat to have those on there. Um, I am still, uh, I have to contact my doctor's office uh, this afternoon and find out when I'm going to have that uh, interview with my doctor. Um, I've been really busy this morning trying to get stuff together for the cooking video and I haven't had a chance. And they told me not to call in the morning anyway. Um, it is like 2.30 right now, so um, I'll, I'll probably be calling them as I'm getting this video together. I gotta go inside and edit it, up, edit all this together and, and put it up. Um, just wanted to uh, uh, hop into a couple movie suggestions real quick before this video starts, and then uh, you guys can watch the cooking video. So, uh, 
the first one that I have today is Sheila Stanilad. And uh, she recommended uh, This Is Us on Netflix. I have not seen that show. Um, but she said it was a really, really good show. Um, Kristen um, recommended The Fall. And that's a TV show as well that's on Netflix. And um, she also recommended a movie called Inside Out, which is a Disney film. And she said that uh, that movie explains her to a T. I have yet to see that movie, um, but uh, I'm interested to watch that one. Um, Kivo recommended The Butterfly Effect and Donnie, Donnie Darko. Those are two really, really good movies. Um, Donnie Darko, uh, I can't remember the actor's name. Um, but that is just, a, if you've never seen that movie, uh, I would definitely go and watch that. That is a very, very, very good movie. And, um, it's got a really, uh, really good plot twist at the end, if you have yet to see it. Um, my recommendations for this, for today, are, um, It Follows. That's on Netflix. That's a horror film. It's a little bit graphic, but if you're into horror flicks, I would definitely check that one out. Uh, another one, this one's a little bit of a horror. It's it, I, it's really hard for me to define what this movie is. It's a little bit twisted, but it's called The Platform. Um, I don't even want to say what it's about because I'll give it away, but it's it's. I've never seen a movie made like this ever before, and it's it just very interesting. It is, it's, I guess you could say it's horror, but I don't know. It's a little bit graphic, but not so much. It's just kind of gross more than anything, just kind of... There's a lot of food involved in it. You just have to watch it to see what I'm talking about. Another one that's on Netflix as well that is a classic movie, is a cult classic, is called Old Boy. Now, that movie is a, a very disturbing movie. Um, it's not just the way that the plot plays out, um, but it is a very, very interesting movie. They actually remade that movie um, not too long ago and because it, it's the, the first version of it is a South Korean film and the, they did one here in America. Um, and that one is not as good as the original Old Boy. If you're gonna watch one, you gotta watch the subtitles, but the original Old Boy is a really good uh, movie. Uh, the next one I have is Mel, Mel Brooks' uh, Blazing Saddles. <clears throat> a little bit over movie. <clears throat> it's a pretty good comedy. And um, the next one, and this one right here, I'm sure you guys have probably seen this one. Everybody's talking about this movie right now. If you have not seen it, I would definitely go check it out. It is Leave the World Behind. This movie uh, was supposedly, I haven't looked that much into it, but supposedly um, Obama had something to do with the writing of that movie. And it is just the strangest movie. Um, I've actually had to go and like watch some YouTubers talk about the meaning behind it. Um, it's kind of like an end of the world movie. It's very, very hard to understand. I had to watch it like two or three times to kind of get what was going on there. But it is a very interesting movie to watch if you have never seen that. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to throw in a podcast recommendation. And my podcast recommendation for today is one called The Secret Room. Um, if you have never heard of this podcast before, it is a very, very interesting podcast. Basically what it is, is the title explains it all, but... It's a gentleman who does a podcast and people call into a show and they tell secrets that they've never told anybody before. And it is a very, very interesting uh, podcast to listen to. Um, I remember one of the shows, there was a woman that was talking about how uh, she had a child with a very, very big rock star. And she didn't say who it was, but she was talking about how they had the kid. Uh, I think they dated each other for a very short period of time. They had a child together and then... Uh, he basically didn't want anything to do with it, and he pays her child support, but she never brings up who it is, but said that he is like one of the top rock stars in America. Um, but just, it, it's stuff like that. Just very interesting stories. I mean, and it, it, it goes across the whole gamut. I mean, everything that you can imagine people talking about, I mean, it's on that podcast. And that's on Spotify. It's called The Secret Room. Definitely check that podcast out. It's very, very interesting. It's not graphic at all. No curse words or anything like that. Very clean podcast. The gentleman that does that podcast, too, is super duper nice. And um, it's one of the reasons I like his show so much because he's so kind to everybody on that show. But um, anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get off of here and uh, go inside and start editing this together so I can get this up uh, before 4 o'clock today. I really would like to have this up before 4 um, and it's like uh, 2.30 right now. So I'm going to go in here and work on this and get this posted up. I hope you guys enjoyed the cooking video today. And I really would like to hear how you, you all um, prepared your dishes, how it turned out, all that good stuff. Um, 
Love to hear the feedback, guys. Thank you so much again for watching. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. So the first thing that we're going to do today, um, and I'm, a, I'm doing this video in, in different sections. Um, I'm going to piece all this together, but the first thing that we have to do uh, is we're going to need to roast off our uh, spaghetti squash. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, show you the process, and then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven um, after it's baked off for a little while. I've got my oven set at 350 right now. It's almost done heating up. I'm going to go ahead and cut this uh, spaghetti squash in half. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, olive oil on here. I'm going to spray my pan uh, with a little bit of uh, non-stick spray. Drizzle my uh, spaghetti squash, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're going to put this in the oven at 350. I'm going to let this go for about half an hour and um, see where it's at from there. I'll let you guys know exactly uh, how long it took for it to roast. But um, anyway, so what I'm going to do, first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the sticker off of this uh, spaghetti squash. And this is just a... Uh, you know, just one spaghetti squash. I think it ended up being like four pounds or something like that. But what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, and this can be kind of hard, so be, be very careful when you're doing this. And I just, uh, first of all, let me just put a towel underneath of this really quick. So this cutboard isn't moving around. But uh, as you can see, these squash can be rather hard. So be very careful when you're cutting this in half. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a spoon really quick. And all of this kind of stuff that like all the innards of the squash and all that kind of stuff, what I end up doing with all this stuff is we feed all of this stuff to our animals. So any scraps that are left over, um, all that stuff is uh, fed into our chickens, our goats, and uh, our pigs. So all this stuff uh, does get used. A lot of times I will save the seeds um, from stuff like this and I'll plant them in my garden. Um, depending on, you know, what kind of a crop it is, because a lot of times if it's GMO crop, uh, the seeds will not uh, produce fruit. It will not do anything. Um, but I'm probably going to save these seeds and uh, try growing them in my garden. So I'm going to scoop these out. Get all these seeds out of here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get most of the seeds out. Alright, so what I'm going to do really quick here. Like I said, I'm going to spray this with a little bit of non-stick spray just to keep it from sticking. And then what I have here too is I have a little bit of, um, I have a little salt and pepper mix. And it's just basically just 50% uh, salt, 50% uh, pepper. And I'm just going to just rub this around in here. Just make sure that it's nice and coated with the oil. And then, like I said, I've got a little, just a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm just going to season this just a little bit, not a whole lot. And I'm going to flip these upside down, and I'm going to place these in the oven, like I said, for 30 minutes. And uh, we'll see how that turns out, and I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, so what we have going on today is, um, like I said, we are going to be doing a uh, chicken broccoli alfredo with... Um, with uh, spaghetti squash. So this is gonna be rather low carb. Um, we're not gonna use uh, traditional pasta with this. Um, like I said also, we're gonna be using an almond milk. You could substitute the almond milk for oat milk. Uh, you could also use regular milk or you could use heavy cream for this recipe as well. I wanted to do this recipe today with, uh, with almond milk just to, to get rid of so much dairy. Um, I know dairy can be uh, rather hard on people. Um, I myself don't eat a lot of dairy, um, so I'm doing this without uh, without so much dairy in it. There will be a little bit of cheese in here, but I, like I said, you could you could omit that. But it's just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Um, I did go ahead and roasted off the butternut squash beforehand. I mean the uh, the spaghetti squash beforehand. Um, and what I have here is it took me like I said I cut it in half. 
a little bit of oil, salt, and pepper, put it upside down and roasted it in the oven um, for, it took one hour at 350. Um, and as you can see here, uh, we have some nice strands in here and I'll show you guys here in a minute how we're going to get that out of there. Um, but I went ahead and pre-did that and let that cool off uh, to make sure that, I, you know, that it, I can handle it easily. I would suggest you do the same. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this back stove going. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the balsamic reduction that I spoke about. I'm going to go ahead. What I have today are some chicken thighs. You can use whatever you'd like. Uh, you could use chicken breast. Um, uh, any part of the chicken that you prefer. Um, now, of course, the drums would be a little bit hard to get the meat off of. Um, I prefer chicken breast personally. I just like the flavor of them a little bit more. I just prefer dark meat. Um, not to mention it's a lot cheaper than chicken breast are. Um, now, when you go to the store buying chicken breast, um, if you buy the chicken breast that already have the bones in them, you're going to save yourself a lot of money doing it that way. I'm about to go ahead and show you how to break down a bone-in chicken thigh um, right now and what to do with the stuff that is left over after we finish breaking these down. Um, one thing I did want to talk about really quick is um, I went ahead and uh, went ahead and diced up my onion and my garlic and all that stuff. With all the scraps that I have left over, all this stuff, I save it. Uh, and what I do with all this stuff, especially uh, carrot, peels, uh, the end pieces of celery, the leaves, um, the onion bits, and all that good stuff. I take all this stuff and I put this in a Ziploc bag and I freeze it. And I save it for whenever I'm going to make uh, chicken stock or beef stock or whatever. Uh, this stuff's great and you don't waste anything. Save all this stuff and freeze it. Um, so like I said, with the chicken, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. Um, with the chicken, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead, and this is still a little bit frozen. I, I didn't think about it last night to go ahead and pull this out. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and, pull, and get these bones out of this chicken. And all I'm doing is just basically just pulling this. If it was thawed out a little bit better, it would be a little bit easier for me. But I'm just basically pulling this bone up and just cutting around uh, the meat here. So I got that one bone right there. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to pull this skin off of here because um, we don't want that right now. And I'm going to trim these breasts up just a little bit and get some of this excess fat off of them. Well, the thighs. I'm sorry. I keep calling these breasts, but they're actually uh, chicken thighs. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this little bit of excess off of here. So we got one there. And we're going to save all this stuff right here as well because that is perfect for making chicken stock. Um, those bones and those uh, scrap vegetable pieces that you have that are left over are perfect to take and put in a pressure cooker or a big pot or something like that. And you can turn that into a uh, chicken stock very easily. Um, once again, I'm just removing a little bit of this excess fat off of here. And I'm going to go ahead and get this bone out of this thigh. You will save yourself a lot of money um, buying the thighs uh, already with the bone in them and not deboned. And it really is not a lot of work. Um, if you've got a couple extra minutes and you want to save yourself a couple extra dollars, buy the ones with the bones in and just take care of them yourself. You're paying for that, uh, you know, for the butcher department to break those chicken um, thighs down for you and remove the bones. So anyway, so what we have here, I have two chicken thighs ready to go. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take them and add them to a Ziploc bag. And I'm actually going to do more uh, chicken, um, more chicken thighs for my family, but I'm going to go ahead and go with this right now. And I'm going to add a little bit of the basil oil that we've talked about in previous videos before. I'm going to go ahead and add this into with the, uh, with the chicken thighs. And also what I have here as well is I have a little bit of apple cider vinegar. This is a third of a cup. Um, this would be for all the chicken that I'm going to be doing today, but I'm just going to go ahead and add about half of this in here for now. So I've got my basil oil and a little bit of apple cider vinegar in here. And we're just going to let this marinate. And I'm going to go ahead and just set this to the side. Let that kind of marinate for a little bit. And then what I'm going to do now, I'll move this just a little bit. And, um... 
Like I said, I have some balsamic vinegar here, and we're gonna go ahead and start a balsamic reduction. I already have this, uh, this pot already ready to go. I have one cup of balsamic vinegar that I went ahead and added into my pot. Like I said, I've got this on medium heat, and this is going to start to reduce down. We want to go ahead and start that now because we want this to reduce down by about three quarters, and we want that to cool off enough so that we're able to work with it later on. Um, but like I said, you want to save um, all this stuff right here, all these chicken pieces. So I'm going to take my other Ziploc bag, and I'm going to put all the stuff in here and use this later on for making a stock. So there's no, no reason to throw any of that stuff away. That's all good product to use. Um, all right, guys. So we have the chicken here that's been marinating. Uh, it's been marinating for about 15 minutes. Like I said, I got a little bit of apple cider vinegar and the basil oil in here. And what that apple cider vinegar is going to do is it's going to help break the proteins down in the meat a little bit for us. And just make the meat a little bit more tender. It will little, add a little bit of acidity to the meat, but it tastes just fine. Trust me. Um, also, what we have here today is I have four cups of almond milk. And this is unsweetened. Make sure you get the unsweetened uh, almond milk. Not vanilla. It needs to be not flavored. All that good stuff. Um, I've got four uh, cloves of garlic that I have finally diced up. One onion here that I've diced. I have uh, one tablespoon of chicken base or chicken bouillon and I have some uh, fresh parsley that I just pulled out of my garden and chopped up here just a little bit ago. We have our balsamic uh, vinegar here reducing right now and that's doing really well. We've got a nice little uh, slow boil going on with this right now if you can see that and um, like I said we're going to let this continue to simmer down and uh, reduce. Um, like I said as well, we have our butternut squash, and this has been um, nice and roasted down one hour at 350. And what you're going to want to do when it gets time, we're going to take a fork and we're going to pull this stuff out of here, okay? And we'll get to that here in just a minute. But what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I have a pot here going for our Alfredo sauce. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of olive oil in here. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil in our pan here for our chicken. I already have these pans already hot. Um, also, not to mention, I do have some broccoli that I cut up into wedges. Um, so I have some nice wedges. I just took it and cut it up like that. And I put it in a bowl with just a little bit of water in there. And then wrapped it with saran wrap. And what this is going to do is this is going to go into the microwave. And we'll do that here in just a minute. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get our chicken starting to sear off here. Like I said, that's just on medium heat right now. Then we got our other pan here with our uh, olive oil. This is going to be for our Alfredo sauce right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one onion in. And we're going to let that cook for a second. Just let those onions get a little bit clear. Now what I am going to do is I have a little bit of salt and pepper mix that I used in my... Um, on the butter on the spaghetti squash, I'm sorry. So I'm letting this sear off, just season it a little bit on that chicken. And I'm just gonna let this get a nice sear on it. And what I also did as well is um I have my oven going at 350 right now. So I'm gonna let these chicken breasts sear off, get a nice color on it, and then um I'm going to toss it in the oven to make sure that it's done all the way. So we have our onions in here. Got a nice saute going on on those. I'm going to go ahead now and add our garlic in. So we have our garlic. We have our onions. I'm not going to cook the garlic too very long. Just a little bit. And we have our chicken here. Just going to let this sear off. And my garlic and onions are getting really, uh, getting really close, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to go ahead and add our almond milk in. And once again, that's four cups of uh, unsweetened, unflavored almond milk. Alright. Get that out of the way. 
here. So we have our broccoli here. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go ahead and just toss this in my microwave. We'll cook that here in just a little bit. We have our almond milk going. That's still uh, on uh, medium heat right now. We'll let that come up to temp. And then like I said, our chicken breast here are tearing off really nicely. And we also have our balsamic still reducing down very nicely. And that's not gonna take too long at all. That was one cup of balsamic. A um, couple other things that I have here as well. I have some uh, uh, cornstarch. You can use potato starch, cornstarch. We're not gonna use very much of this. This is only a couple tablespoons in here. I just dumped what I had left in my box. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this right here. And this is what you call a slurry. And the slurry is going to be what the thickening agent is for our Alfredo sauce. So we're going to let that keep going. Now what I am going to go ahead and add in here right now is this little bit of uh, chicken bouillon. So if you're at home you have the little cubes, you could use just one cube. But I have the powder right here. So I'm just going to let this keep cooking. I'm splashing stuff everywhere. And like I said, I have my oven going right now. So now that I've got a nice sear on these chicken breasts, you can see the color on those. I'm gonna go ahead and toss these into the oven. And my oven, uh, my pans are oven safe. So I definitely make sure that you have oven safe pans before you do that. If not, you can just toss it onto like a sheet pan or something like that and put it in your oven. And I'm gonna go ahead now and move this over here. All right. So, the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get a plate out, and we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to get some of this butternut squash out of here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this camera just a little bit closer. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this, butter, I mean this uh, spaghetti squash, and I'm just pulling at the inside of it like this. And it should come out rather easy. What you want to do to make sure that your uh, spaghetti squash is done, like I said, is put it in the oven upside down, roast it off. And you want to kind of pinch it. And when it starts to get soft, that's when you're done. You want to feel the outside like this. And when you can get a little bit of push on it, your spaghetti squash is ready to go. And the squash should come right out of the shell, just like this. Not hard at all. I'm not really putting any pressure on this. And we have our spaghetti squash. That easy. Alright. And like I said, all this kind of stuff right here, we save all this stuff and we feed it to our animals. So they, you know, we're not wasting anything. Alright, so we have our spaghetti squash ready to go. We'll leave that to the side. Our balsamic reduction is actually starting to look like it is getting really close to being done. And what I've talked about previously is, uh, and this, you got to be really careful when you're doing this because um, it can take your breath away when you have hot vinegar like this. But, <clears throat> as you can see, it's starting to coat the back of the spoon. And we're really starting to get there right now. The one thing about the balsamic reduction is, this has to cool first. I'm going to let this go for another minute or so, and it should be done. <clears throat> but it will. It'll, it'll just take your breath right away. So just be careful uh, over top of that pot like that. Um, our Alfredo sauce is uh, working really hard. And we want this just to come up to a nice warm simmer. Um, as you can see, I'll turn this down just a little bit. So we're starting to get some steam coming off the pot. We got our garlic, got our onions in there, and we're gonna let that just simmer. And what, what's happening now with this balsamic reduction, and I'll see if I can get this in here, but can you see those little teeny bubbles that's happening in there right there, just like that? That is the point right when we wanna take it off. If you can see those little bubbles that are starting to form on the top like that, we know that our balsamic reduction is ready to go. Okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this from the heat. I'm going to let that go actually one more second. Um, 
I'm gonna let this this um, this Alfredo sauce continue to go for just a minute. Like I said, our chicken is in the oven right now, and um, that's at 350. I'm gonna let this sit in the oven for about I don't know eight minutes, maybe ten minutes or something like that, and uh, pull that out. The one thing about chicken is, or any kind of meat, after you pull it out of your young oven. Don't cut right into it first. You want to let it sit for a few minutes before you do. If you go ahead and slice right into your meat immediately as soon as you pull it off, all the juice in the meat will just come right out and your meat will be dry. So we're going to want to take this out, let this rest for a minute before we uh, cut into it. Um, so like I said, our Alfredo sauce is starting to look pretty good here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take our, our cornstarch here and I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it. I'm going to grab myself my whisk, and I'm just going to whisk this up, if I can get this to close back, and I'm just going to whisk this, uh, this slurry up, that's exactly what it's called, it's just a little bit of cornstarch and water, that's it, and like I said, there's a couple tablespoons in here, but we're not going to need all of that. The one thing that's really nice about thickening with cornstarch is, is that when you add it, it will thicken immediately. And um, it, only, it, it only takes a second. It's not like when you're working with a roux. Uh, all right, so our balsamic reduction is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and get that off of the heat. And you can see all these little bubbles that have formed on the top right there. See how that's looking? See how it's coating the back, the bottom of that pan? Our balsamic reduction is ready. Like I said, that has to cool before we work with it. We have our slurry here, which is, like I said, just water and cornstarch. And you don't need to add much water. You are gonna have to mix it up really nicely. But I am going to go ahead and I'm going to tilt this camera back down one more time. Bring this over here just a little bit. All right. So what we have here, as you can see, it's, you know, really watery right now. So I'm going to take my slurry and I'm going to add this slowly to our Alfredo sauce until, we, until it gets thick. And it shouldn't take much, like I said. This should only take a second. You want to make sure you're stirring this as you're adding this in. And basically what we're doing here is um, we're creating almost a Mornay sauce, kind of. So this is starting to thicken up now. I'm going to crank this heat up just a little bit. And this should start thickening it up really nice here now. Like I said, you just want to keep stirring it. Don't let the uh, don't let it sit because the bottom of the pan will burn and it'll scald your sauce and that will not taste good. So you really want to make sure that you're stirring this nicely. And especially, I'm 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 really shouldn't be doing this right now uh, with a metal. Um, with a metal whisk. Uh, when you're working with um, when you're working with a metal pan like this, you really want to use wood um, because you can scrape metal off the bottom of the pan, and it can make your sauce taste like metal as well. All right, so we have our sauce nice and thickened up now. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to go ahead. Alright guys, so we have our Alfredo sauce here and it's nice and thick and um, as you can see here, we got a nice thick sauce. I've got my spoon here and you can see how thick that is. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I have some, um, some shaved Parmesan cheese here and I'm just going to go ahead and add about a half a cup of this in here for now. We're just gonna melt that down into our. Uh, we're gonna melt that down into our sauce. All right. And what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a spoon really quick. 
And one of the things that I used to always talk with my guys about whenever I was a chef is um, taste your food. You know, I would tell my guys all the time, you know, make sure that you have plenty of spoons on your station and taste everything that you're cooking. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that it's got uh, enough seasoning in it. Everything's good there. Now, what, one thing I am going to do, and um, i got to add some black pepper to this, which I've got to crush some. And I have a coffee grinder, which I'm going to use to grind up some black pepper. I'm going to finish that off in here in just a little bit. I'm going to stop the video and do that. But another thing that we're going to go ahead and do, too, is our chicken here should be done. All right, yep, our chicken is done. I'm going to go ahead and remove this to our cutting board. All right, and we're going to let that rest for a minute. All right, so we have our sauce done. I have another pan here that we're gonna build this in. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do too now is I'm gonna set this microwave for, for four minutes. I took uh, half a head of broccoli, cut it into those wedges, dropped maybe a quarter of a cup of water in there, wrapped it up with saran wrap. There's no salt, no pepper, anything in there, and just threw it in the microwave. This is the easiest way to uh, steam your broccoli. Just get yourself a microwave safe bowl, you could put a lid on it, um, or either use saran wrap, or you could just leave it open if you want. I like putting the saran wrap on there because it just helps steam it a little bit better. But like I said, we have our chicken breast here, we have our squash, we have our parsley here, we have our balsamic reduction, which I have here. Um, I moved it into a little uh, container, a little deli container, and it's just cooling off. I'm actually going to go ahead and throw this in my refrigerator for a second. Just to let that get a little bit cooler. Our chicken breast is, is sitting here resting right now. And let's get this out of the way here. We will go ahead and get our plate together. Alright. So we have our plate and we're about to go ahead and assemble all this. Broccoli is cooking right now, so uh, I'm going to come back in just a minute. I have to go ahead and get that black pepper done really fast, add that to our Alfredo sauce. That's one of the key elements to an Alfredo is a lot of black pepper. Um, you could add a little bit of red pepper chili flake to this if you want. Um, I would, but I didn't do it today. Um, if you don't want to put the garlic or the onions in there, feel free not to do that. All you need to do is just add your almond milk. Let that heat up until you start to see a little bit of steam coming off the top of it, and then add your slurry to that, and let that thicken, and then add your cheese on the back end. Let that get thickened before you add any cheese to it. If you don't, the cheese will like kind of curdle in there. It'll start to break apart. It'll lump up. It'll sink to the bottom. You won't end up with a good sauce. So you want to always make sure anytime that you're doing like a Mornay sauce like this that you get your thickening agent in there first, let the sauce get thick, then add your cheese at the very at the very end of it. And that way you make sure that you have a nice thick creamy sauce and the cheese isn't getting all messed up in there. Um, I think our chicken breast is pretty much ready to go. Like I said, we have our spaghetti squash right here. That's ready to go. Um, I do have a little bit more cheese over here that we're going to finish off the dish with. Um, I already talked about the saving the chicken bones and the uh, vegetable scraps. Like I said, I've got these right here. And what I would do with this, I put this in my freezer, and whenever I need to do it, depending on the day and what I have going on, if I don't have a lot going on that day, I'll go ahead and take those chicken bones, um, and I will go ahead and put them in my pressure cooker with all those vegetable scraps and go ahead and get a chicken broth going. And then I'll put those in a Ziploc bag or, you know, quart containers, and I'll label it and I'll freeze it and put it in my freezer. Um... One thing that you could do with your chicken bones, which I would suggest doing, is put them in the oven at like 400 degrees on a sheet pan. Grease that sheet pan up. Put those chicken bones in the oven let them roast first. When you do that, you will end up with a very nice, dark, rich uh, chicken broth if you do so. You will get way more flavor by roasting those bones off for a little bit. Anytime that you're doing like a beef broth too, that's like the first thing that you're going to do. Um, especially if you're making like a demi-glace or something like that at home, you know, the first thing that you're doing is you're taking those beef bones, rubbing them down with tomato paste all over, and then you're going to put those in the oven and roast those off until they get really dark brown. That's how you end up with that really dark 
brown, rich, demi-glaze, like gravy sauce is by roasting those bones off of that tomato paste and it adds a lot of umami to it as well. So like I said, our broccoli is in here. That looks, looks like it's almost done. So as you can see, I got a nice balloon here. Be careful grabbing this out. I do have chef hands. I've been in the kitchen my whole life and um, uh, my hands are kind of immune to getting burnt so easily. I mean, I still get burned, but um, I can handle rather hot stuff. Like I said, that's hot. Um, but uh, I think that needs to go in for maybe one more minute. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this back up. If I can get this to stick, put this back in here for one more minute. But while that's cooking, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take our spaghetti squash and I've got a measuring cup here. This way we can go ahead and make sure that we're getting the proper amount. So I'm gonna put one cup So I have one cup of spaghetti squash here. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our pan. I'm gonna crank this up a little bit because my squash is back cold again. So I'm gonna turn this on medium. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one, let's try one half of a cup first and see how this turns out. So I got a half a cup of sauce. So I'll add that in there. Turns out. Oh yeah. All right. So, one cup of the um, one cup of the butternut squash. Let me scoot this down just a little bit for you guys. Bring you over here just a little bit. All right. So, <clears throat> I have one cup of the. I keep calling it butternut squash. I'm so sorry. One cup of spaghetti squash with one half cup of our almond milk alfredo sauce. And as you can see, this is very nice and creamy. You don't want to beat this up in the pan too much because you're going to tear your spaghetti squash up if you do so. So I'm just going to let that warm up in there. And I have my broccoli here. That's all done. I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to go ahead and get our chicken breast. Um, one thing I will suggest to you too, while I'm talking about little little things you can do in your kitchen, when you're using your honing um, steel, you want to make sure that you clean this really well because grease gets built up on this, and when it does, it will not hone your blade. Um, so if you use a degreaser or like some Dawn or something like that, scrub this down really well, and you'll <clears throat> really get a nice edge back on your blade when you hone it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and... I'm going to cut this chicken on the bias. All right. And I think that we're about ready to plate. So last but not least, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this fresh chopped parsley. I'm going to add that right into our spaghetti squash. That's just going to add a lot of nice color to it. It's going to add some nice fresh flavor from that parsley. A lot of people think that parsley doesn't have any flavor, but not true it really does it, it, it really adds some nice uh, freshness to your dish so what we're gonna do here I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna go ahead and plate let me go ahead and we'll go ahead and move this right on down here all right so time to plate all right so we have our spaghetti squash chicken breast here, which I'm just going to fan out across the plate like this. Alrighty. And then, and the you, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to add my black pepper to the pasta. Um, remember to do that, to add your black pepper to this, because that's really going to make, make that Alfredo uh, stand out. And I'll fix it after I'm done here. This is a little bit hot. I'm just going to take this and slide that right there. All right. And like I said, we're going to finish this off with a little bit of cheese. Just to make this nice. And then last but not least.
we're gonna add a little bit of our and this has actually gotten a little bit chilly now because I put it in the fridge um but I'll tell you something else that I could do here really quick too toss this in the microwave for 10 seconds just to heat it back up a little bit because it did the the balsamic glaze did get a little bit cold in my refrigerator and it thickened it back up it was perfect beforehand here we go so now I'm just gonna add this on there like that and this is gonna add a nice little bit of sweetness to it nice little bit of uh, nice little bit of sharpness to this dish and I'm just gonna finish it off with just a little bit of parsley there and that's it guys we have a nice very healthy low carb dish uh, we have our seared chicken breast that's been marinated in basil oil with the uh, almond um, almond milk alfredo sauce and spaghetti squash pasta with the shaved parmesan our steamed broccoli I did not season this broccoli at all this is ready to go just like this um, and as you're eating this dish, you know, you could chop your broccoli up and throw it in with your pasta if you like. I just prefer the presentation this way. I like my broccoli just steamed and just plain. But you could cut this up as you're eating, mix it up in your pasta and all that good stuff, and it should be really nice. So with that said, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off of here now that I've got this dish done. And then I'm going to go ahead and sit down and go over the rest of the video with you guys and... Um, finish up the video for today. Thank you very much.